G'day, Lockie here. Today I want to talk about nested virtualization. Now, um, I'm at the catacontainers.io page at the moment. I'm not sure if many of you know of this, but there is an endeavor out there in the open source community, communities to make containers more secure. And one of the ways that we can actually do that is with nested virtualization. So if you've ever heard of run V or clear containers, these actually set out to achieve um, kernel isolation rather than having containers traditionally run on the same kernel. You can actually create a very lightweight VM or have an, a separate kernel for your containers to run on. Now, if you go over to the catacontainers.io page and actually get started here, there are some quick links on, um, there's a deck and a one pager. I think the best diagram to illustrate really the change that I'm talking about here is this. So here we have the hypervisor on the cloud, we have the kernel, uh, we have uh, C group namespacing here, and we have our container runtime responsible for creating that namespace and putting our containers in those namespaces. Now over on the right diagram, what we're doing is we've cut it down and we're not sharing the same kernel. So in this model on the cloud, the VM acts like the, the hypervisor hypervisor and we have a very lightweight way to uh, launch kernels using run v or um, clear containers. Now what this gives us is kernel isolation. So um, obviously attack surface area is different. Now I think one of the things that is really interesting out there is how does this all fit into Kubernetes and can I ingest that in Kubernetes? So what I thought was I could create uh, a, a quick video on uh, showing you how to do that. So if you're interested in Cutter Containers and the work that's being done over there, it's all in the open source community. Um, you can go pop over to catacontainers.io. You can check out the project status um, and all the calls and get hooked in there. Um, and thank you for the wonderful work that these folks are doing in this community. Uh, the data sheets are there as well. But what I want to do is pop over to a place where this is really easy to do. So we have ACS Engine, so we can spin up Kubernetes clusters on Azure really simple with ACS Engine. I want to show you um, something that was contributed recently by uh, Jesse Frizzell. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, that actually shows us how we can achieve kind of this nested virtualization uh, that Cata Containers kind of sets out to achieve in Kubernetes, and you can start playing with this today. So in ACS Engine, I'm just gonna to go to the docs, go to Kubernetes and look at features. And you can see here that clear containers runtime is in alpha here. Um, here is the clean clear container JSON, but let me go to the description first. So you can actually tell uh, in ACS Engine it to configure the container runtime to clear containers when it bootstraps the cluster. Um, there is a caveat here that your VM size needs to support nested virtualization. So take a look at DV3 or EV3 series to do that um, and make sure that uh, the device, those nodes for the device Mac of a disk will use. So there is up the top here, back going back up to the features, uh, a model that should work for your use case. So just, um, you can pop over there and take a look. So what I've actually done um, is spun up a cluster using ACS Engine in this model that Jesse has provided. Um, and I just quickly want to go through uh, a complete demo of what that might look like. So let me pop over here. Here's actually, I have a VS Code here with the same um, clear containers JSON up. But what I actually have, uh, I asked Jesse, what's the best way to demonstrate this? And we thought, about it for uh, a few minutes and maybe just showing that we had a different kernel was enough. And I actually said, that's a great idea. Let me just demonstrate that we have a different kernel. So I have two deployments here in the same file. One demonstrates clear kernel. Now all this is doing is actually doing a uname minus a in a loop in an Alpine container, nothing magic there. But what you will see is this annotation here, io.kubernetes.cri, untrusted workload equals true. So we're saying this is an untrusted workload, run it in a clear container. So we actually have mixed load uh, workload cluster here. Uh, down here, we're looking at the host kernel. So we're demonstrating that we're not using nested virtualization here. And we'll do that by um, just running uh, a deployment here with three pods, three replicas, sorry, doing a uname minus A. So I'm going to copy this and pop over here to my terminal. My terminal, on my terminal, I can SSH. So I have this cluster set up, Kubernetes version. So I should have a 1.10.0 cluster here, get nodes. And we have three, a three node cluster. So what I'm going to do is feed in that manifest using kubectl create dash f dash so 
pasting in those two deployments. We should get clear kernel and host kernel created. And let's do a watch. So you can see I have three here running. So they're all up and running. Now, what we actually demonstrated here is, look, we have 11 seconds. Now, didn't I just start something in a VM there? Yes, uh, but it's lightning fast. And, and clear containers and run V has stripped out and made the runtime to get a, a new kernel up and running and place those containers uh, inside the pod, inside that kernel really quickly, lightning fast. So to answer your, will it take forever to spin up? Rest assured, I just demonstrated in 11 seconds, I'm sure it was faster, that these things spin up lightning fast. Now I'm gonna take one of these, because as you remember, I'm doing a U name uh, minus A in a loop and cube cuddle logs of that pod. Let's just grab a clear kernel. So we can see that the kernel version I have here is uh, 4.14.2286 and container. And now I'm going to take over here. So this is the host kernel. Yeah, so you can see that 4.13.1012 uh, Azure. So on the host, I'm running that kernel. And inside clear, I'm running a different kernel because I'm spinning up this lightweight kernel on the fly when these containers come in. Now, I just want to take it just a little bit further here just to thread the needle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to SSH to the master and from there I'm going to jump across to a node just to show you what's happening under the hood here. SSH to that node. So I am on one of the nodes in this cluster. I want to go and interrogate. This is actually running container D. So this is all done um, through Kubernetes, CRI to container D. Container D has been configured to have trusted and untrusted workloads and put them in different container runtimes. Um, so one's getting scheduled to clear and the other one's going straight to container D. I'll show you how that is set up. But what I can do with container D here is I can do um, namespaces list. So we have this kubernetes.io namespace. So I'm going to do a um, kates.io containers list. Right, so what I've demonstrated here is that here are all the containers running on this machine. So I have Hypercube and I have two Alpine images. I would expect one of those Alpine images to be running in container D on the host, the other one in um, uh, the clear containers runtime. So you can see that each one has a pause container and an associated. So what we should be able to do here is run CC runtime list, I believe it is. So I can actually take that, so we can see that that pause container at that ID here is actually running in the clear containers runtime in a nested virtualization. Um, and I can also to go take this. So you might ask yourself, and here's the Alpine image that's running under clear containers as well. You might ask yourself, well, I ask myself, how is the networking working? Um, and the all the containers inside a pod get scheduled onto the same kernel so that they can all communicate by the same network. So the, you can only see that two of them are running, the pause and the actual application container, and the pause and the application container for the on the host are running outside of this. Now finally, just to tie out the knot here, um, cat etsy container d config.toml, and I didn't spell container d right. Uh, config.toml. So finally, just to thread this through, so if we have an untrusted workload here, as indicated by that annotation in Kubernetes, we're going to go down and set this as a runtime engine. Otherwise, we're going to set it to run C here. So that is the, the whole needle through. So we have now a mixed mode cluster where we can run um, kernel segregated containers or nested virtualization there. So we're running up a lightweight kernel and putting that pod inside that kernel using clear containers in this example. Um, or we can run them natively um, using container D on the same kernel um, and run C just on the host kernel there. So this is fantastic. I think it, it shows you the whole thread of what's possible here with um, nested virtualization all the way back up to Kubernetes. So as a Kubernetes user, I just had to add that annotation and I could actually schedule my untrusted workload in a separate kernel um, 
provisioned by clear containers runtime. So I just want to round, round this out by saying a big thank you, obviously, to Jessie for upstreaming that so that I had something to play with and demo here. It's been wonderful. She's actually taken the time to walk me through so that I could understand this. So thank you, Jessie. And I just want to say thank you to the folks in the Cata container space, um, Intel and Hyper-V, working on these kind of endeavors to make um, that kind of security exist. So hopefully this was beneficial um, and get to running nested virtualization in Kubernetes. Cheers.